Okay, so you can see Repetier host here as it's printing through this uh, this model, uh, which is pretty cool actually. You can actually zoom into the model and you can see it kind of going around as it's doing it, which is really good. And all of these layers of print are actually coming out really well. So I'll go into printer settings and here we go. What we have on the screen here is this. So printer type, classic printer, Apparently some kind of a dump area. I'm guessing that maybe would allow you to just like clean the tip with just by knocking it over the edge. Apparently that's what that is. I'm not I'm not fully sure. Home X, Y, and Z is min. X min is 10. X max is 135. Bed left zero. Bed front zero. Y max 135. Y min 10. Print area width 10, uh, 140. Print area depth 140, print area height 135. I think these are actually a little bit wrong. I think it's all 130 for these other two. I don't think it will actually reach 140, but these are actually some of the ones I've seen on the internet anyway, and it, it seems to be, it seems to have worked for them, which is good. So we go to the extruder here now. Uh, max extruder temperature is 280, max bed temperature is 120. But I can I can't actually see my printer reaching that temperature for the for the bed, 120. I found it difficult to get to 60 in honesty. Um, but I suppose that was before I had the enclosure, so maybe it'd be easier to to reach higher temperatures, maybe like 70 with uh, the enclosure or so. I'm not actually sure. Um, there we go. The poles coming up as well. Um, max volume per second. 12. Uh, printer has a mixing extruder, one or some four colors. No, uh, just leave, leave everything else as default. Printer was travel uh, travel feed rate 4800. Um, Z axis feed rate is 1000. Manual extrusion speed 220. Uh, manual traction speed 30. Uh, default extruder temperature is 200. And heated bed temperature is 55. So yeah, I, I have I have them up pretty warm, I'm not going to lie, um, and that is just to to kind of combat the issue of the, um, the, the fan cooling all this stuff down, is what I've done is uh, I have had to warm it up a little bit more, um, and I don't know if that's a good or bad thing really, I suppose maybe it's good because then the tip can stay really hot and the product of that tip can stay really cold and it can stick to whatever is underneath it better hopefully um, I think that's the way it goes uh, I can't really can't really say in in all honesty but I, I think that's how it works check extruding bed temperature is tick remove temperature requests from log so you can remove them from the log down here which is just continuously powering its way through um, park position 000 send in TA everything down here is ticked uh, until add to comp printing time, invert directions in controls for nothing. Uh, so don't take any of the boxes. Connection, serial connection, port, comma free, bought, bowed or board rate, uh, 115, 200. Um, transfer protocol, auto detect, and then I think everything else is default anyway, so it's not really, it's not a big issue uh, about what you put on here. Uh, and on here, I don't know if you've ever played with Repetier host before, <clears throat> Hopefully you've probably looked at it and thought, oh god, I don't know how to do that, so I'm going to go and look up a video. Um, this is that video, hopefully. Um, I kind of spoke about the model that I was printing at the start, and it is like a wizard kind of guy. Um, if you can see here, he's got his robe on. It's a, it's a, a 2D, uh, not a 2D, uh, a, a polygonal kind of guy, and it actually does look pretty close to that on the actual build platform apart from this bit down here which doesn't look like it like it at all there is actually holes coming through that now i might have to try and print it at 100 percent and see if that does work everything that it does print does seem to be pretty good i'm, I'm thinking that these parts are just maybe shrinking or, or something like that uh, the fan is at 53 you can see down here in the manual control what goes on with the printer um so where would i really start okay we've got the temperature control here We've got the two views, the 3D view and the temperature curve. 
temperature curve is sticking around about 105, it seems. Um, which is fine, actually, it's not bad. Um, and the one down here is the bed temperature, which is quite wavy between 57, 58 maybe, and 50, actually. It's, uh, it's quite a big wave, quite a big difference. Uh, to be fair though, I don't really think, think the bed temperature matters too much right now. Uh, I mean, it's like so far up on the print that it's gonna be hard for it to even make a difference to it. Yeah, so you can actually see the temperature and different things like that. You can see different information, which is good to know. Object placement, this is the actual object that we're trying to print. So there's like a guy with some funny hair and he's got he's holding a stick. Nice big strong stick. And that stick is actually starting to bend now. Where it's just getting to around about this part. Um, and it is actually starting to, to bend a little bit further out. So, I mean, this could be a very interesting print at the end. <sighs> okay, uh, what have we got? Uh, yeah, slicer. So this is the most important part that you have that we can go through. This is the slicer um, and this is what matters the most. Slicer is the default set on here. You do have Sky, Sky and Forge and Cure Engine as well, which is interesting. But there's different settings here. You have print settings, printer settings, and then extruder one settings, uh, and they can be changed in the configuration here. Do not click manager. I mean, you can you can click manager if you want, but if you click manager, it will come up with just these three different like configurations, and you can change the executables and stuff like that if you don't like if you don't like the one that, we're, that they're initially using, which is um, what it is. Is what it is. Um, if you press configuration here it will pop up the configuration for slicer in a second. Here we go. Okay, so this is the final bit that I will talk about here. Um, this is my settings in slicer. These are the ones that just seem to be kind of working for me. Um, I mean, it's not 100%, but it's something to work with. So, I mean, if you could do some tweaking on this, you could probably make it perfect. Um, and if you have made it perfect, then please let me know how, because I haven't got there yet. <laughs> uh, yeah. So it's always good to share information, uh, especially when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, I've got four minutes 20 left of the actual uh, of the actual print, so it won't be very long until I can show you that. Okay, so we have here the layer height, that's 0.2 millimeters. The first layer height is 0.4. As always, we always have it at that kind of setting. Vertical shells, we have four, um, and that is on each outer layer. There'll be four walls before you get to the outer layer. And the outer layer on this is actually building very well. You could probably put it down to three. I don't know, it, it depends on how you feel. Horizontal shells we have here, solid layers four, five. I'm thinking of putting it up to five, five and see how that goes. I will actually do that now. I'll, I'll do it as five, five because I think the top layer will probably come out better if there was five solid layers at the top. <laughs> Even though that would be, well, that would be one millimeter actually. So that would be, yeah, that would be what, a millimeter. One mil. Um, yeah, so quality. Extra parameters if needed is ticked. Uh, avoid crossing per perimeters. Perimeter is what I'm supposed to say. Uh, is unticked and then the other two are ticked. Advanced scene position is set as nearest e uh, external perimeters first. Is not ticked. Um, infill, I have the infill set as 20%. Sometimes I do it as 30%. It doesn't really matter um, as long as it's between 20 and maybe 50. You don't want to use too much because then you'll use like a lot of filament for it. It'll make it a lot heavier as well. So it, what, what, what they do with the infill is they, they kind of honeycomb the pattern inside, which is what it says here, honeycomb. You can use what they normally use, which is uh, line, I believe, or rectilinear. Top bottom fill pattern is rectilinear. Wow, you can actually change that. So this is the fill pattern for the top and the bottom layer. You can reduce the infill, reduce printing time by combining infill every one layer. This one just allows for like better accuracy. I'm not sure if this will be handy to have. Uh, the default is one, so it's probably best to have it as one. Only infill where needed. I mean, you can use this to give yourself hollow things, um, but I don't think it's a good idea to do that with this printer specifically anyway. Uh, solid infill every zero layers. You can set this up, so that would mean that it will be like a solid layer every so many layers. Uh, default is zero, but maybe I'll switch that on to maybe like two or three, every two, two or three layers. I think default chooses it itself, so that's, so I mean it still would do it eventually. And then a tick and a not tick. Uh, skirt and brim, 
So I like to have three loops on it, depends how you like it. But this is just the bit that prints around the outside of the uh, model. Um, so it will do like three loops, that clears the shit off the print head, usually. Um, sometimes I said that's five as well, um, especially with this uh, the filament that I'm using. Oh, it's finished. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, uh, distance from objects. So it will do it six millimeters away from the objects and there's a skirt height of one layer. I don't see why you'd use more than one layer for the skirt. Minimum extrusion um, length. So this is the minimum that you can have extruded for the, for the skirt. I just have that as zero because we get three loops out of it. Usually the item is big enough for there to be three fairly long loops or whatever. Support material, generate support material, no. Support material doesn't really matter too much. Um, I have it off anyway, so do as you will with this. I, I, I don't, don't concern me. Um, perimeters I have mostly set at 10. Uh, differences are infill, support material, uh, bridges which is at 60, the other two at 30, uh, and gap fill which is at 20. Travel for non-print moves is 130 millimeters a second, uh, and that could be you can change that however you want it to. First layer speed is at 15, which is kind of funny because it's actually faster than the normal speed. But hey, it works for the first layer anyway. Default, everything else is just set at the standard. So it's 0, 80, I think. Yeah, max print speed is 80. Max, volume, max volumetric speed is set at 0, which is just like whatever. We don't have multiple extruders. Advanced, we have 0, 200%, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then 15% for infill slash perimeters overlap. One for bridge flow rate uh, 0 to 0. All right, and then that is basically it. So there's not much changed on there from the default settings, I don't believe. Uh, then my settings, it'll be diameter is 1.75 and 1 for the extrusion multiplier. Uh, I have my first layer set at 210 and other layers set at 210. Bed set at 57 for the first layer and 55 for other layers. Uh, with cooling, I have, uh, this one might be a little bit different to what the uh, standards are for this. I'm not really sure, but I have enable auto cooling, which is good. Minimum fan speed is 15% and maximum fan speed is 55. I might put that up a little bit more. I'm not sure yet. Uh, bridges fan speed at 40% and disable fan for the first three layers, uh, which is important to do because you need to allow your first three layers to be hotter and thus stick better. So it's good to have that for the first three or so layers. And I think that's the default anyway. Uh, and the other difference that I have normally is this one here. I set that to 60, enable fan if print time is below 60 seconds, uh, which is good because that means that the fan will come on if your layer is gonna be under 60 seconds and that will allow you to cool it down more appropriately for the next layer. Okay, nearly done with this now. There's not much left to go on about, I'm, I'm on it honestly. Uh, enable fan if, yep, yeah, okay. Slow down if print, uh, if layer print time is below five seconds. I don't know about this one. So if anyone wants to like me about that. Minimum print speed is at 10 millimeters a second, which is good. Uh, in here under the printer settings, I left that all as default. We have one extruder anyway. Uh, use relative E distances, use firmware retraction. I'm, uh, I'm considering using firmware retraction on here on the next one maybe, maybe that could help, but I don't think it will help with any of the issues that I'm actually getting, so I'm just going to leave that the way it is. Um, you can change your vibration limit and your pressure advantage, um, but we don't have the right levels for that, or the right uh, sense for that. Here is my G code, hope you can read that, I'm not reading that out, so yeah, there you go. Extruder 1 size, nozzle diameter is 0.4 millimeters, uh, and that is correct. Uh, retraction length is 2 millimeters, 0 to disable. Lift Z is at 0. Speed is at 40 millimeters uh, a second for retraction speed. You can literally set this to anything that you want. Like, I, I think some people even set it to like 100 and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that doesn't really matter too much. But for, for the sake of this, I've got it set as default, which is 40. Um, extra length on restart, no. Minimum travel after retraction, two. That's fine, whatever. Uh, retract on layer change, set as zero. There's some cool stuff on here anyway. It doesn't really matter that much. And that is pretty much all the settings that I have for it. Um, I will um, go back to here. Yeah, so once you've got the slicer set up, you click slice with slicer, and what it will do is it will slice it. So it'll go progress, you get a progress bar and all that kind of stuff. It takes a sweet time um, to do, but here we go. 
969mm of filament required. So yeah, it has the base here and the person and stuff. I've realized this priest guy that I'm printing out is actually a really good one to try it on because it has the solid parts, it has the top layer, it has the skinny parts as well and also the retraction between the two. Uh, so, uh, and also a little bit of a bridge in, in some areas as well, uh, which is interesting. So that is now sliced properly. What you wanna do next is just click on print. And once you click on that, it will start printing for you. After that, it will run through all the necessary things. It will heat the bed up. It will be, it will take it up. Oh God, I need to take the old one out. Yeah, so I'll be back in a second once we have got the model printed. Okay, so the print has literally just finished. I've been waiting for this to uh, to happen for like, what was it, like 40 minutes or so. Uh, and the print uh, isn't much better than previously. I don't know if it's any better than previously. It doesn't seem to be flat enough, if you know what I mean, which is very strange. It has actually came out probably the same as the previous time. I'm wondering if I can, because there was something for overlap amount I'm wondering if I could actually get that to work. And you can see on here that um, the stick has stuck, even if it's, uh, oh, it's a, lot, it's a lot more solid than the last time, actually. So the stick has stuck. Um, he is stuck to the base pretty solidly. So there's no issue with that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually change the filament for next, next episode to this wheel that I have here. This is what you get with the printer. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so change it to that to that wheel now um, and then in the next episode I will try and print the same object again because I think it's actually a pretty good one to test with um, maybe not I don't know but I, th I think it's pretty good um, I will try and print one of them and I'll try and do a Marvin as well so I do a Marvin up first with the blue and then I'll, maybe I'll try it on the old software as well to see if that makes any difference as well so we'll see how that goes so yeah don't forget to subscribe let me think for a minute with this at Nathan42 and Thanks for watching.